Okay, uh, in this video, we want to use some of the concepts that we've learned about turning points, how to determine what they are, and of course maximum and minimum points. And we want to use those concepts now to try to solve some practical problems with them. And here we're going to consider the problem where a rancher wants to enclose two rectangular areas next to a river. So the river is going to serve as, as a boundary here. Um, one of the rectangular areas is supposed to be for cattle, and the other is supposed to be for sheep. He has 240 yards of fencing available, and the question is, what is the largest area that can be enclosed? Now, whenever you have a problem like this, it's always best to kind of try to sketch out the problem. So, you can imagine here might be a river, and the farmer wants to have two rectangular areas next to the river, so the river is going to be one boundary, and then we might have the fence going out like this from the river at a distance. We don't know what it is yet, so we'll just say X. And it's supposed to be two rectangular areas, so on the other side here, it would also go out from a distance X from the river. And then here would be the other boundary. And he wants to have two rectangular areas, so we have to have another fence in between here. that goes out an X distance from the river. So now we have two rectangular areas here. And if we set it up like this, and we don't know how far this distance is going to be, what will be the length of this side? Now the total length is 240 yards, so we have 240 minus X minus X minus x. So this side here this would have a length of 240 yards minus 3x. Three pieces of fence that we used along here. Okay, and then we're supposed to find out what is the maximum area that can be enclosed. So, can we get a formula for area? That's like that should be pretty simple. It would be this side times this. That would be the total area. So, the area will equal x times 240 minus 3x. Or the area we can just multiply it out as 240 times x minus 3 times x squared. And that is the area. So, obviously, as we choose different values of x, that is varying distances from the riverbank, as we choose different values of x, that's going to give us different values for the area. And in theory, we could just pick and choose different values of x's and graph it out. That would be the, be the that would be the that curve there would be the area here, the total area. Um, we could do that, and then we could look at the curve and see, you know, was it shaping up to where it might be a maximum point? at one value of x, or maybe a minimum value of the area for another value of x. We could use that approach, but we don't have to, because with the techniques now that you've learned in calculus, we have a uh, much more powerful approach available to us. Here we know that the area, the way the problem is set up, the area is equal to this, So, we could certainly find out what 
the AD-axis and we know that for this graph here the turning points the turning points for uh, this one, the A graph will occur when the ADX equals zero. So we know that. So it looks like it should be pretty simple to find out what these turning points are. And the next question is, will it represent a maximum value for A, the area, or will it be a minimum value for the area once we determine these turning points? Well, we know now that when we take the second derivative of A, with respect to x, if that comes out to be a positive number, that's a minimum point. And if it comes out to be a negative number, if this is negative, then that's a maximum point. So we know all of this, and it looks like this is A, so let's find the ADX. D A D X will equal 240 minus 6 times X. And we know at the turning point that equals 0. So, 240 minus 6x equals 0x. I said x is just going to be equal to the value of 40. So, there's our turning point. There's only one of them. Now, at this value of x, then, does that give us a maximum value for the area or a minimum value for the area. So here's dA dx d squared a dx squared that will be equal to just minus 6. So that no matter what, that's a negative number. So clearly then, what we have here is at our turning point here, where x equals 40, that will be for a maximum area. So we go back up to here. This is 40, this is 40, this is 40. Clearly then what we're going to have is Forty by one hundred and twenty, and multiply those together, we'll have forty-eight square yards, and that will be the maximum area. So you see, it's not a difficult problem at all once we use the uh, calculus techniques that are available to us. Um, but in any of these problems, whenever possible. Try to sketch out a diagram, determine what all the variables are, and how they relate to one another. We know in this case, each of these is x, so this side here is going to be 240 minus 3 times x. And then we can very easily determine a formula for the area. And once we have that, really the problem is all set up for us. All we have to do is take d 
dA dx, set it equal to zero, solve for x, and then determine whether this turning point here is going to correspond to a minimum value for the area or a maximum value value for the area. Here it was just trivial because the second derivative here is always negative no matter what. So that's it then. Uh, that solves the problem. And hopefully now you're starting to get a sense that all these things that you've been learning so far in your calculus course, um, they can come in very handy for solving problems. And come back and join us for the next video. We'll try and tackle another problem like this that might be a little bit more complicated.